Hey everybody, I'm John. Have you ever wondered where space begins? We're going to talk about that next on How We Got to the Moon. We choose to go to the moon. So where does our atmosphere end and space begin? I mean, wouldn't you want to know, how far up do I have to go to be an astronaut? And when does my airplane become a spaceship? It's a tricky question because our atmosphere just doesn't stop and then space begins. Our atmosphere keeps getting thinner and thinner and thinner the farther you go from Earth. Um, scientists have even found traces of our atmosphere as far away as the moon. Today, the International Aeronautical Federation defines space as starting at the Kármán line, which is 62.1 miles up, or about 100 kilometers. To give you a sense of how far up that is, commercial airplanes fly at about 6 to 7 miles up above sea level, and the International Space Station is about 250 miles up. Now, the Kármán line was defined and called that because there was a famous aerospace engineer back in the early 1900s who did a lot of mathematical equations. His name was Theodore von Kármán, and he discovered that at a certain altitude, there wouldn't be enough air to give an airplane lift and the air would just be too thin. And um, what's lift, you ask? Well, that's a good question. So lift is one of the four forces that act upon an airplane as it's flying through the air. Here, check this out. The propeller, or engine, is designed to move the plane forward by creating thrust. This thrust will overcome the force of drag, which is caused by the friction of air. The wings are designed to create lift, which overcomes the force of gravity. It's the actual shape of the wing that creates a greater air pressure below the wing than above it. This difference in air pressure pushes the wing up. Voila! Lift! So now you know where space begins, 62.1 miles up. Until next time, keep looking up, and thanks for joining me on How We Got to the Moon.